Hi guys, it's Dom from the Immense Guide. You know when you take an ibuprofen and a paracetamol together? Well, I do, because I'm older and everything aches. Or, if you had cancer, say. Some of the cancers are treated with up to five drugs at once. But in MS, one DMT, I shouldn't say zero, one DMT at a time. And with Dr. Nara Parvin, who's actually researching doing it with two drugs to do two different things. It's called an adjunct. So, hi. Thanks for giving me your time, Shirley. Good morning, Dominic. So, as you've explained it, it's completely the right thinking. So, in every other disease group, there's two drugs to target different aspects of the disease. So, you get a combined effect. Um, but for some reason in MS, combination treatments have gone out of walk. And it's not specifically certain why that is. So, we thought to ourselves, look, all of these drugs, they're targeting B cells and T cells, but if we can add in the plasma cell um, therapy as well, then we'll get better efficacy in the long run. So that's the whole goal. I'm nodding my head like I understand this. I, I, I get the high level. I should say, Sharmali is actually my neurologist and you're running a trial on this. You're looking at a drug to do just what you're talking right. about. To yes, so interestingly, plasma cells are usually found in your bone marrow. Um, or mm. in other organs in the body. Um, they're found where there are lymph nodes, and obviously the brain lacks actual visible lymph nodes, but they seem to have set up shop um, based on uh, histopathology studies in the surface of the brain um, in where the meninges um, fold into the gyri. Two things. The... Two things. Mm -hmm. Histopathology is what? Um, the study of brain tissue, whichever right. tissue okay. really, but for us, it's the brain tissue. And so we can have a look um, at people who donated their brain and when they've had MS for study, just so that we understand a bit right. more about the disease. And meninges are, when you look at a picture of the brain, it all looks like these sort of, some of it's been scrunched together. Are they the... Linings. The so linings. That, so when you see that whole brain, like my logo for the gut... Channel. Yeah, so, all right, so that's the meninges. That's yes. the linings of the, of the grey matter, essentially. Yeah. Right. And uh, when people looked at this area and region, they found B cells, they found B cell follicles, they also found plasma cells as well. They and shouldn't when, be there, really. Yeah, and when, okay. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> and in animal models of inflammation, they have found occasional freely moving plasma cell in the spinal cord of the disease. So... <laughs> They're there. I mean, it, it shouldn't surprise you that uh, they are there. Uh, it sounds like the hooligans that are out running around where they shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. And um, what I noticed very early on when I was looking at MS is that people have what's called oligoclonal bands, which mm. are evidence of antibodies in the CSF. And that's generally lumbar punctures, isn't it? They look yeah. at oligoclonal bands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, when we're getting a lumbar puncture. Yes. Right. And... Um, once a person becomes positive for them, they don't seem to become negative, despite all the treatments they receive. So, like, you can't... This, to me, is you, you, you can't turn the clock back. It, it's, it's gone past the time, and that's it. Yeah, and right. if you're still maintaining that antibody production, then, in my opinion, you still have inflammatory activity. Well, this is the thing everyone's talking about now, isn't it? I mean, there's Professor Giovanni was talking... Smoldering MS, is that right? Is the take a drug like Oculizumab, Oculus, which you know, there's other ones like it, but I was told it's very good at shutting down new lesion activity, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually stop your MS. None of them do. It's not that it's a failing of it, it's just that it's the whole development. They're trying to work out how to stop the MS underneath. Is that fair? Yeah, there's different components to smoldering MS, not right. just plasma cells, but I think right. they do contribute. Right. They keep churning out antibodies. Right. So Seismus is this trial. Because, mm. uh, I mean, this is the exciting thing. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, you're, you're, you're deep in this, but to me as a patient on the outside, this is the exciting thing is I'm sitting with the first person who really seemed to be drilling down on oh, let's see if we can do something else and get it from this way as well as this way kind of thing. Yes. Uh, and so Seismus is happening here in London at the Royal London Hospital, isn't it? Yes. Right, okay. And there's somebody else involved, which 
you may see on some of my other posts, Dr. Waffer. Yes. So, <laughs> He's so, pretty funny. I like him. So he is doing the day-to-day -day activities right. around the trial. Um, I see the people when they start new, just to mm. kind of take them through the whole understanding of what the trial is. I'll put all the descriptions for the trial in the, in the uh, I'll put all the information in the description of the video. But if somebody's interested in the trial, essentially, they have to be either in London or able to, I've taken parts and I live near Oxford, which is about 30, 40 miles away. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to get in here to the hospital. Yeah. And it's um, sadly, if you're in um, Wales, you're probably going to find it a bit of a challenge, but you need people who can reliably come to London initially it's every for the first month it's every two weeks or every week and then it goes it turns into a, every two months doesn't it yes um so at the start it does start with a two visit in the month and then it slowly right. peters out to one every month for the six months and then it goes to one every two month visit with right. just a telephone calling for the other month so yeah um it's an oral drug um so you don't have to actually come in to once and be connected week. that's the best yeah. thing. all i had to do was remember to take it but it was once a week it was this tiny weeny little pill yeah, too. and there is a drug holiday on the fourth week of every month so you don't take a tablet on the fourth week of the month it's placebo so control, control isn't yeah, it so I mean, it's right. um, randomized so every right. one person who goes on the dummy tablet to go on the active ah okay so it's two-thirds yeah for active and one third so you you've got a two-thirds chance of getting the active the other thing i keep banging my head saying to people with clinical trials is whether or not you're on the active tablet you see a doctor far more frequently than you would in the NHS. You get more time because you're practicing research medicine, which is different from clinical medicine. So, mm. you know, somebody can sit there and work within reason, not two hours, but talk to you and ask you questions and say, I didn't understand this when I spoke to my neuro. Because you don't replace their neurologist, do you? You, you are, you're an adjunct, you're an add-on as well, aren't you? Yes. When, when, or or yeah. a wafa. Yes. You know, so, yeah. Um, I think um, the main thing is, uh, you know, feel, feel free to ask any questions. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the heart of it, we're all neurologists. And um, if there is a question which we can answer, we will answer. If it, um, uh, but if it's stuff, generic knowledge-based questions, we, um, we can happily answer that. In some instances, we do help out with other allied referrals which are needed. So if spasticity needs help, we might pass that back to you. You're, you're in contact with yeah. any patient who takes part. You and Dr. Wafa are in contact with their medical team. So it all this doesn't happen in isolation. What I'm trying to say is generally, and they've actually studied the fact of how do people do when they take part in trials. And there's this overall, tends to be an overall improvement purely because they tend to be a little more engaged and they feel, I mean, I think it's a slight feeling thing, you know, you you feel, you feel more loved. Yeah, but Thank yeah, you, Dominic. Yeah, sure, I'm, yeah, it's a, uh, well, waffa, <laughs> uh, mostly. But uh, it, it's the attention, it's the ability, it's not thinking, oh, damn, I've got, you know, all these questions to ask a doctor and it's going to be a year. Yeah. You know, because that's the NHS and that's the way it works and, I think that's the cool thing as well. I always say it's it's like quasi private healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so even if you're not on the active ingredient, you're no worse off than you were to start with, but you've got, should we say, a higher touch level of medical care for your MS, which is good. I think you're uh, still recruiting, is that right? Yeah, still recruiting, but to come to your earlier point, I, I think participating in clinical trials do, does upskill you. Um, so your knowledge and understanding around the condition, what to expect, also improves as you're participating in clinical trials. I'm sure you've said that from your experience. Well, I've had MS for 32 years, and I was looking at it, and just under half of my care has happened under the clinical trial sort of heading. So I've had a um, sort of regular external doctor, shall we say, but I've also been... On clinical, I mean, my first clinical trial was for dimethylfumarate, which is Tecfidera, mm. and that was back in the day. Yeah, that's you know, but, wild, yeah, but... yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm just aging, I'm 55, and I'm significantly older than you. And it's, but it's one of these things where 
You're right. I'm just, I've learned so yeah. much more. You don't realize it almost, you know, because, yeah, MS has thrust you into this different world. You're not getting out of it. You've got MS. You know, you're in the kingdom of the sick, as Susan Sontag, the author, says. But my view is embrace it. Don't fight it. Because you presently MS is incurable. So let's work and find out the ways that we can make it the least hassle part of my life. You know, it, it's not perfect. There's many things, but being able to talk to people, you know, I mean, I can send my wife out a text now and he'll, he'll answer it. And I, I'll either say, well, you need to speak to your doctor, which happens to be you in this case, but it's, um, or he'll answer it. So it's a pretty cool thing. If you're in London or can get to London, Sismus is worth talking about. I'll put all the contact details for the trial in the description for the video. So check below. And if you want to know more about it, I would really consider it because you've got MS forever. I'm not trying to frighten you, but you know, get on top of it is my view and, and try and do everything you can. And this is just one of the steps that you can do about it. So Charmaine, I really appreciate you sharing the time. And now I know what meninges are exactly. <laughs> I was pretty sure, but it wasn't a hundred percent. So that's great. Happy to inform and contribute and thank you for yeah. asking these very important questions no it's my pleasure all right guys see you soon take care see ya